So the, this talk is making disease reversal work for you. First and foremost, the, you know, the key is that I'm not going to give you some magic vitamin or mineral supplement uh, or some magical uh, the formula to eat two rutabagas and hang a piece of garlic around your neck. This is a basic, simple human psychological uh, mechanism. Stop kidding yourself is where healing really starts. And I tell this to my patients in the office. I tell it to the medical students. So let's talk some fundamentals here. Disease, of just about any type, except of course, congenital diseases and, uh, and I guess uh, you know, motor vehicle action, things like that. But generally, disease results from the violation of natural law. Uh, for carnivores like mountain lions and your house cat, a flesh-based diet is what they naturally eat. It's, it's, they're following natural law when they eat a piece of flesh. Plant eating hominids like gorillas and bonobos, they are designed uh, to eat a steady stream of leaves and fruits and, and whole plant foods. And the truth is that from our small mouths and our flat grinding molar teeth and our rotary jaws and our long intestines uh, for their handling fiber and in our, in our saliva, we've got digestive enzymes that digest starch is not protein. We are, we're plant eating hominids. We have basically the same digestive system that our gorilla and bonobo cousins do. And, and when we violate that law, when we go to um, consuming a diet based on animal flesh, like the carnivores do, well, then there are some biological results from that that are often uh, very dangerous here. So, First thing to stop kidding yourself about is the standard American diet. If you're eating it in any way, shape, or form, and that's usually a, a meat-based meal surrounded with lots of sugar, salt, fat, and processed uh, food chemicals. If you're eating that, stop kidding yourself. I tell the medical students who are still in etiology unknown land, but we don't know the cause of high blood pressure, we don't know the cause of type 2 diabetes. I'll say, look at what your patients are eating. Look at what most people are eating. We become a fast food nation. Now, I know that not all of you, and if you are hip enough to be attending this conference, you probably already are migrating your diet to a more plant-based one, even if you still uh, include animal flesh in it, you're, you're migrating towards a plant-based diet. And so I'm not wagging any fingers at you, but for your friends, your relatives, or if you are still just putting your toe in the water here. Now, let's talk about some of the realities of the standard American diet, and what it really does in the human body. So some basic science here. If you were to eat a diet based on whole plant foods, which is what I'm advocating, uh, and uh, and here's one, here's a nice meal, a uh, colorful salad here, a hearty vegetable bean stew. Uh, here's what, quinoa, quinoa and zucchini boats, nice steamed green and yellow vegetables. You eat a meal like this. And if an hour later I sneak up on you with a needle and a syringe in my hand, and when you were looking, I draw five cc's of blood into a red top tube, let that blood clot, spin it down in a centrifuge and have a look at it, this is what you'd see. And the red clot goes to the bottom and the liquid part of the blood, the serum rises up to the top. And this is how your blood should look. You, it's crystal clear. You can read newsprint the normal serum. This is what your blood should look like after you eat a meal. But if you have a standard American diet, bacon and eggs for breakfast, or cheeseburgers and fries for lunch, or pizza, or fried chicken for dinner. You eat any kind of meal like this. And an hour later, I were to draw that same tube of blood, spin it down, and have a look at it. What you'd see is that normally crystal clear serum has this milky appearance. This is called lipemia. Lipemia means fat in the blood. Postprandial means after eating. This is the fat in the blood after eating. Now, I will grant that not everybody shows it this optically densely, but everybody has a wave of fat that goes through your bloodstream after you eat a fatty meal. How can you not? Where else is it going to go? And your blood stays fatty for five, count them, five hours. <clears throat> Here's Kuo's classic study. 
Uh, they gave someone a fatty meal at hour zero and they drew blood once an hour for six hours. And they took those six blood tubes and put them one after another into a spectrophotometer to measure how fatty the blood is appearing, how milky it's looking. And you can see the blood getting fattier and fattier and fattier and fattier. Takes the liver about five hours to begin, to begin to clear the fat out of the blood and bend that curve down. And during these five hours, actually six hours, uh, while the blood is so thick with fat, evil things are happening. This is not a good state. The artery walls are getting injured, opening the door uh, to atherosclerotic plaque formation, leading to heart attacks and strokes. As the fat flows through the abdominal fat stores, it sticks there, increasing abdominal obesity. Uh, I'll show you how the fat increases insulin resistance, making diabetes worse. And saturated fats are pro-inflammatory. They fan inflammatory reactions throughout the body. This is what's happening. For those five hours, you have to eat that fatty, processed, sugary, oily, salty meal. Well, think of what this means in the pattern that most Americans conduct their eating day. And when I say Americans, the, it's people eating in the Western style. The Canadians do it, the, the Brits, the, the Aussies, the Kiwis, anyone eating this Western style uh, is going to be doing this to their bloodstream. They start their morning off with something fatty, a Greek muffin, bacon and eggs, and as I said, all for the next five hours. Their blood's running thick with fat, their arteries are getting injured, obesity's increasing, uh, inflammation's going up, diabetes getting worse. Takes the liver till about noontime to begin to clear the breakfast time fat out of the bloodstream. When time to enter the cafeteria and have a piece of for lunch and another wave of fat goes through the bloodstream. And all afternoon, the arteries are injured, obesity's increasing, diabetes getting worse, inflammation's going up. Takes the liver till about dinner time to begin to clear the lunchtime fat out of the bloodstream when time to visit the colonel and send another wave of fat through the bloodstream. And all evening, the arteries are getting injured, obesity is increasing, diabetes is getting worse, inflammation is going up. Takes the liver till about 10 o'clock at night to begin to clear the dinner time fat out of the bloodstream. When on the way back to the bedroom, we polish off that half pint of ice cream and another wave of fat goes through the bloodstream. And the truth is most people in the West are keeping their blood fatty all day. The stuff never clears out of the bloodstream. We are constantly in the postprandial state. Why? Because hunger simply is not tolerated in our society. We are so wealthy uh, in, in all Western societies that it, as soon as you get at all munchy hungry, if you're home, you stick your head in the refrigerator and, and lay out for last night's leftovers. If you're out, you head for the convenience store or the restaurant. And we are constantly eating, essentially. And so we are constantly keeping our blood in some variety of disappearance. Now, I'm focusing on fat, but it is not the great evil uh, substance here. I'm using the fat just as a marker to show you how long the blood is affected by each meal, but there is a lot more in the blood besides that fat. And so let's deal with other things. We got to stop kidding yourself. And that's the high amount of sodium in the Western diet. And this, people say, well, I really don't use salt shaker at the table anymore. Actually, that's the one place you get to control the, the salt you might add. I'm talking about the sodium that's in processed foods, the restaurant meal, the prepared meats, uh, the cheeses, the French fries, the, the chips, the crisps that people eat. This is where all that salt is hiding. It's already in the spaghetti sauce at the Italian restaurant. It's in the, the soy sauce at the or Asian restaurant. Um, it's a high sodium diet. Now, all the salt flowing into the bloodstream uh, will uh, work its way into the artery walls, stiffens the artery walls, makes the kidneys retain fluid to uh, dilute out the salt. All this raises blood pressure, uh, this damages the eyes, the kidneys, and sets people up for strokes and heart attacks. But also, we now are realizing that all this sodium in the bloodstream turns on particular type of lymphocytes, the TH17 helper cells, and this opens the door to autoimmune diseases like lupus. The high salt diets are not healthful. Uh, and so uh, this is something we've got to stop kidding ourselves about. 